Welcome! This is MCG Tech with a custom all-in-one water cooler. In this video, I will be sharing my all-in-one water cooler design. Something unique about my design is rather than a pump and water block combo, I have an independent pump and reservoir. By building the complete water cooler directly above the socket, I do make some compromises including clearance issues and the application of even pressure on the CPU. That being said, I did successfully build and test my water cooler, so without further ado, here's the process I went through to build it. For my CPU block, I will be using a $4 aluminum block I bought on eBay. I remember Brian from Techia City said that these water blocks were uneven on the side that made contact with the CPU, so I used a belt sander to remove the bulk of the paint and overall roughness. Then I used some sandpaper and water to make the water block as smooth as possible. Next, I prepared my radiator, which I bought for $15 off of eBay. After some searching at the recycling plant, I found a fan that fit the radiator. One issue with the fan was the length and type of header. However, extending and changing the cable should not be that complicated. In order to fasten the CPU block to the motherboard, I used part of an air cooler. Specifically, I took the plate you place beneath the motherboard, as well as three of the screws and springs you screw into that plate. To replace the bracket, I simply measured the socket, cut out a piece of wood, and drilled holes according to the location of the socket and water block. Once I confirmed my wooden bracket worked and didn't have clearance issues, I hot glued the water block to the bracket. With the completed bracket, I went ahead and glued the radiator to the corner of the bracket. This meant that I could no longer put a screw there because the radiator covered the location where I would insert the screw. I then attached a rubber standoff to the corner where the screw could not be inserted. The purpose of the standoff is mainly to help keep the cooler balanced during the initial cooler installation and possibly stop the bracket from damaging the motherboard. For my reservoir, I decided to use a Yeti aluminum can, which came with one of their products. Considering its removable top and sturdy build, it seemed like the ideal candidate for a reservoir. After drilling three holes, it was ready to go. I ended up using an aquarium pump I bought for $6 on eBay. To fit the pump inside the reservoir, I had to cut the cable, feed it through the hole in the top of the can, and reattach it. With the pump inside of the reservoir, I carefully glued the can to the side of the radiator to make sure there were no clearance issues. With the cooler completed, I test filled the loop for the first time. At a glance it appeared to be working until I added green food coloring which exposed the leaking from the bottom side of the soda can. After further inspection I realized the bottom of the can was a separate piece and not watertight. After attempting to seal the can using hot glue, I filled the loop again. This time it did not leak nearly as much, but it definitely wasn't ready to be installed. After swapping in a new reservoir, I finally filled the custom all-in-one water cooler successfully. Before I could get testing, I still had to extend the fan header for the radiator fan. Because the wires were standard red, black, and yellow, finding a donor fan was pretty easy. With a little bit of heat shrink, I was confident in my cable extension. To get a comparison to the custom all-in-one water cooler, I tested the computer using an aluminum stock Intel cooler first. For testing, I am stressing the CPU using the program CPU-Z, and to measure temperatures, I am using a program called CoreTemp. After 10 minutes of stressing, the Core i5-760 from the $250 budget build reached an average maximum of 79.25 degrees Celsius. Additionally, it had an average minimum of 43.5 degrees Celsius. With the control test out of the way, I had to remove the motherboard from the computer so I could install the custom all-in-one cooler. Installing the cooler was pretty simple. Basically all you have to do is set up the plate beneath the motherboard, put thermal paste on the CPU, and screw the cooler in on top. One thing I did have to focus on was ensuring even pressure was placed on the CPU, so I added some rubber washers to help keep everything balanced. To my relief, everything functioned fine when I turned the PC on and I even noticed some lower initial temperatures. Sadly, once the 10 minute test was over, I saw some issues. First of all, the average maximum was much higher than the stock coolers, with a staggering 92.75 degrees Celsius. At least the minimums were lower with an average of 30 degrees Celsius. 
To add to this, the Core i5-760 was able to maintain its 2.91GHz boost clock throughout the duration of the test. To bolster the disappointment from these results, when I was removing the cooler from the computer, I accidentally spilled some water on the motherboard, but I didn't realize it until it shorted out the computer when I tried to use it later. In conclusion, this water cooler did not get the results I was hoping for from the stress test. My guess for why it performed so poorly include a possibly inferior fan position, as in pulling through instead of blowing through, unbalanced pressure put on the CPU due to the radiator and reservoir location, and too weak of a radiator. Building this cooler was a lot of fun, so if you guys have any recommendations for what or how to cool next, I would love to hear them. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Also feel free to check out the rest of the content on this channel. Thank you for watching.